Okay, what we have here is a very early 500 Marini um, before they put, started putting the kink in the down tube. I picked this up fairly cheaply off the club forum and uh, been gradually recommissioning it in recent weeks. Got it fired up. Valve gear was a bit noisy so I stripped it down to take a look and the valve gear is a little bit worn and I'll be refurbishing that shortly. But one of the problems I discovered was a stripped thread on a rocker stud. Um, it all came apart apparently with no problems but there was just a raised ring of metal around the stud which was suspicious to me so pulled the stud out and it came out complete with most of the thread. So I've got a uh, thread repair kit and uh, Heli Coil is probably one of the best known ones but there's V coil, saber thread, recoil, and the one I'm using um, is an own brand um, Kennedy, um, which is one of the brands of Cromwell Tools who supply um, some very reasonable stuff either from their trade counters or mail order. Now I wanted to leave the engine in the frame and not take the head off at this stage um, which does restrict access somewhat um, so in order to be able to do it in frame and get the stud absolutely upright to the head i would made a little guide block on the milling machine and you can see here the holes are on 20 millimeter centers as measured off the head. Um, one of the holes is drilled to be a nice sliding fit over the rocker stud and the other is sized for the drill that, taps, uh, that drills the hole out to take the thread insert. So I can put that over the rocker stud. To turn the drill I've got it held in a little drill chuck so I can get that lined up and it's so slug and it takes a little bit of wiggling. There we go and I can feel for the centre of the hole. Okay, I've got a drill bit that's a nice fit in the chuck, just giving me that extra leverage. I just need to open down to the base of the hole. It feels as if we might be down at the bottom. So we can withdraw the drill. Try not to drop any swarf into the engine. I'm just going to check how far in we've gone. We've gone in quite a reasonable distance. Deeper in fact than the thread on the stud, so that should be 
quite deep enough. Now the next part of the process is to use the oversize tap that comes with the threading kit. Now I don't really have room in here to use a uh, conventional tap wrench so I've got an open-ended spanner which is a decent fit on the end. Uh, you've got to keep the tap parallel to the stud in both axes. I'm going to coat the tap in some tapping compound which will both improve the cutting action and retain the swarf and stop it getting into the engine. I can just get it to bite by turning with the fingers a little bit. Okay. I'll keep moving my head around to check that we're parallel. Because if I get the stud out of line, it'll make fitting the gear back on rather difficult. Looking in one axis is easy, the other's a little bit more difficult. I think we're there. Yeah, we're looking good. I just need to oh, we've gone off axis here. Apply some pressure to the tap to pull it back in line. There we go. I'm just backing the tap off every now and then so that it breaks the chips off and that way they don't curl up in the flutes of the tap and jam it. Okay, that's the tap bottom out. I'm gonna carefully run the tap all the way out, trying not to dislodge any of the swarf.
and then carefully wipe up the grease or the cutting compound I should say which has got the swarf nicely trapped in it clean the hole out a bit run the tap back in to try and pick up any remaining swarf That's got pretty much all of it now. And I'm just going to run a little chamfering tool to remove the raised edge. Now we've got a one of these inserts. And they do these inserts in various lengths, and they're multiples of the diameter. So this is the insert that normally comes with the kit, um, which is a one and a half D. So it's one and a half times the diameter, which is eight millimeter. This is a two D insert, um, ordered extra, a bit longer. Um, give the stud more stability and got a drive tang at the bottom and you just wind it in we can get it to start there we go Okay, the drive tool is just slipping off the end and I should have moved the collar back a fraction before I started. Which I have now done. Get it engaged on the tang again. Last few turns. And you want to get the insert screwed in about half a turn below the surface. A little bit more to go. <coughs> Get 
just crammed on the inside there. And that's now below the top surface. And then either by turning the tool 90 degrees or using the special punch in the kit, uh, break off the tang at the bottom of the insert. with a little magnetic retrieval tool and then the uh, stud can be screwed back in and I'll put a little Loctite on that because originally these would have been tapped with a undersized tap to make it an interference fit so that the stud would stay in the head when you unscrewed the retaining nuts um, but this is a standard tolerance thread, so as you can see, it was it's going to screw in with little resistance, and it would unscrew every time you try to remove the nut. So a little Loctite will sort that out, and jobs are good, and it's all ready for the uh, valve gear to go back on when it's been rebushed and new shafts put on. And that's all for now.